Welcome to Unity with Heaven. My name is Joseph and uh, we are busy with a series, uh, the seven schools in heaven. And uh, today we're going to talk about the spirit of the fear of the Lord. And uh, uh, this is going to be an awesome session. Uh, we're going to learn amazing things about what is the benefits of having the fear of the Lord in your life. How the fear of the Lord operates on this earth when he sits on you. What actually happens and, and how that uh, protects you. Uh, and then also how the fear of the Lord has a school classroom in heaven where you can go and you can actually learn about uh, the fear of the Lord. And you can get that part of the instruction that you need to rise up as a son in the kingdom of God. Okay, so now let's quickly talk about uh, so uh, these seven spirits of God. The seventh one uh, is uh, the spirit of the fear of the Lord. Uh, Jesus loved the spirit of the fear of the Lord. He delighted in him. It says in Isaiah chapter 11 uh, verse 2 and 3. Uh, where it explains the, the seven spirits of God. And it says he delighted in the fear of the Lord. That's what Jesus did. And so uh, the fear of the Lord has uh, many uh, manifestations in a person's life when it rests upon them now remember i'm going to talk now first about how it looks like when the spirit of the fear of the lord are resting on you and then we're going to talk about what the spirit of the fear of the lord actually teaches you when you go to his classroom in heaven okay now when the spirit of the fear of the lord are on you uh, then you will walk in obedience towards the lord that's probably the biggest manifestation and so if you see someone walking in ruthless obedience to god's instructions then you can know that the spirit of the fear of the lord are operational in that person and that person have the fear of god in them now when you have the fear of god in you that will protect you to walk holy before the lord what happened to a lot of people they go through difficult times maybe of sickness or poverty or or maybe they're just struggling uh, to, to get a breakthrough and in that time they continuously seeking God's face they're praying they're trusting in the Lord and you know uh, they they have to almost live in survival mode because uh, the Lord has to supply to them every meal and they're trusting God for you know even the transport from here to there they need to trust the Lord for that breakthrough that they need you know and so there's this dependence on the Lord uh, but now when a person walk in wisdom and they follow the instructions that God gives them and they apply the plan and the strategies that God gives to men, then they start to, to prosper. And when they prosper, now they can't live their life in dependence on the Lord uh, because they, they don't feel they depend on God anymore for certain things because they already had the breakthrough. And this is where the fear of the Lord then come in. You know, uh, the question comes, do you live your life with conviction uh, or do you just live your life according to what cards are dealt to you? When you live your life with conviction, that means you're going to make decisions uh, that's going to be based on the conviction that you have of the call that God has for your life. What is his blueprint? What does he want you to do? And accordingly, you're going to make decisions. Now, if you lie, live your life just to say, well, I'm going to always choose what I think is going to be financially and just how it feels um, uh, in my, my comfort is going to be the highest thing to consider. My financial well-being and my comfort is going to be the two things that I consider to be the most crucial factors when I make a decision. And then you're not going to have the fear of the Lord in your life and you're possibly going to fall into terrible sin and you're going to make terrible decisions in your life. All right? So you, you take an example of a men and women um, living together. So when a man and a woman are married together, uh, then there is a, a covenant between uh, the two of them. Um, whether they are in love or they fall in love or they fall out of love, that has no effect on their relationship because there is a covenant. Okay? So a covenant is actually stronger than that feeling of you are falling in love with someone. Okay, uh, Because uh, the marriage is actually not based on love. It's actually based on covenant. Okay, uh, Although we would like to think that love needs to be a priority in marriage and and for most marriages that is a priority uh, but what keeps you together is the fact that we made a covenant and the covenant is that we will live our lives together 
and we will uh, you know take responsibilities uh, towards one another in this marriage covenant uh, that we have and i will meet your needs and you will meet my needs and we will complement each other and we will build a family and maybe wealth or whatever together in this covenant okay so now uh, when you have the fear of the lord in your life and especially when you're a young person then the lord says well i want people to get married and then because of the fear of the Lord, and maybe, you know, it's not popular or uh, you don't feel like doing it, just based on that, you'll say, well, I will not sleep with that man or with that woman uh, because I have the fear of the Lord in my life and I know that is wrong. And, you know, my emotions might say contrary, my feelings, you know, uh, or, you know, I want to express myself or I got a different opinion. None of those things matter because the fear of the Lord says God's opinion is higher than my opinion. And I will follow his ways. Okay. So that's why, you know, even when me and my wife uh, got married, uh, we didn't have much of a physical relationship, uh, really. Um, you know, I lived in America. I was at the prophetic school. She was here in South Africa. Uh, we uh, phoned each other once a week for five minutes. And that was like the, the relationship that we had. And I wrote the letters. And then two weeks before we got married, I... Um, uh, flew to South Africa and uh, you know we spent a little bit of time together but it was always with people uh, uh, most of the time we were not really almost alone almost ever and then we got married uh, and then we flew back to America and we continued with our uh, with the schooling and all the work and things and in that time our relationship developed uh, but because we had the fear of the Lord in our lives we said well there's certain things that we will just not do and we didn't do them uh, because we want to live righteous and holy before the Lord. Okay. Now, the fear of the Lord is is nice and is easy to have in your life, especially when you have nothing. But we have something. You know, if you are multimillionaire, you got a lot of money, you got a lot of resources, you got maybe passive income in your life. You say, well, I don't need to work. I I can get this passive income. I don't actually need to go to church. I've read Bible. I know the Scripture. I've got a relationship with God. Why would I do that? I don't need to serve at the church. Uh, you know, I feel I've matured. To a level where I feel comfortable uh, when people invite me to come and minister somewhere I don't always have to say yes uh, and you know when you become so comfortable and you say well I don't actually need any of those things uh, then you really need the fear of the Lord because the the blueprint that God has for you is tremendous uh, and these amazing things that God wants you to do but that's going to mean you're going to have to roll up your sleeves and you're going to have to really get busy and do what God has called you to do also when you come into a situation where you pressure it and you said well you have to choose between you know following godly principles or you're going to follow uh, um, money you know then you have to say I'm going to follow God's principles even if it kills me I don't mind I'm going to continue to be obedient to God and so you see uh, in many countries you have these uh, very liberal uh, woke ideas that sometimes comes up uh, and then companies uh, oblige and I kind of bend uh, their values to say I'm going to accommodate all of this sinful ideas and things in our company uh, and that's so ungodly uh, and that means the fear of the Lord has departed and so what we have to do as a nation and as people all over this earth uh, it's not only in America or just in South Africa that's lots of places we have to come before God we have to humble ourselves and repent and say Lord we're going to come back to your values and your principles and we're going to start to to uh, receive the fear of God in our lives okay uh, the Lord actually says if you have the fear of the Lord in your life then you will prosper and so that is so important now I want to read you this scripture that gives you a perfect example of young people that had the fear of the Lord in their life and you can see in their behavior they didn't even flinch for a moment to say we're going to compromise in any way because they had the fear of the Lord in you uh, in them okay so I'm going to read the scripture in uh, Daniel chapter 3 verse 13 and it says there um, and this is now the story about Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego um, the, then Nebuchadnezzar in rage and fury gave the command to bring Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego so they brought these men before the king so Nebuchadnezzar spoke saying to them is it true Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego that you do not serve my gods or worship the gold image which I have set up now if you are ready at the time you hear the sound of the horn flute harp and lyre and the psaltery in symphony with all kinds of music and you fall down and worship the image which i have made good but if you do not worship you shall be cast immediately in the midst of a burning 
a fiery furnace and who is the god who will deliver you from my hands okay so the king gives them two choices they're going to play some music and then they're going to fall down and worship this golden image or they if they don't worship they're going to be thrown into a fire you know it's like very clear you know it's almost like when these uh, preachers preach the gospel they say you know you can choose you can uh, uh, serve the lord right now and you can go to heaven it's going to be amazing uh, and you're going to live a good life healthy prosperous everything is wonderful or you can choose against god and you know there's just going to be curses and destruction against you and then you're going to burn in hell for eternity okay so these are your two choices what do you want to do <laughs> you know that's uh, the turn and burn evangelist preaching you know uh, and that's it is almost what uh, what nebuchadnezzar says you can choose between this fire or you can worship my god you know there's your two choices <laughs> uh, but these young men at the fear of God in their life, and they saw that burning fire, and they didn't, they didn't flinch. They said, "You know what? Even if we burn to death, we'll we'll go for the fire." But we fear God; we will not worship your golden image. So let's see what they said. So Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, "O Nebuchadnezzar, we have no need to answer you in this matter." So he said, "You don't have to test us. You don't have to play the music. We can someone tell, tell you right now. This is what's going to happen." If that is the case, our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace, and he will deliver us from your hand, O king. So they're looking straight in the eye, and they tell him, listen here, we have the fear of God in our lives, and so we're going to choose God always. There's nothing that you can do to force us not to choose God and to be obedient to him. And then... Uh, they continue but if not let it be known to you O king that we do not serve your gods nor will we worship the gold image which you have set up all right and so then of course uh, nebuchadnezzar got really mad he threw them into the fire and then they were not consumed by the fire a fourth person appeared in the fire and uh, then he called for them to be to come out and only the only thing that burnt was that um, ropes that tied them but there was not even the smell of smoke on them okay now uh, there's many um, uh, talks about who that fourth person is uh, a very popular <laughs> teaching is that that was actually jesus that was standing them there uh, in the furnace um so uh, you know people that went into the spirit uh, tell me uh, they prayed about it and they they asked the lord uh, you know who was that fourth person <laughs> uh, and they say that was actually daniel because daniel was interceding for them and then daniel came with them into that furnace and just stood there with him there uh, as he was interceding with him in the spirit and then uh, he was able to um uh, they were able to come out so but um you know others say it's christ <laughs> others say it's an angel <laughs> i'm not going to say who it is but uh, you know uh, uh, that story about uh, it was daniel interceding from them is, is quite convincing okay right. so uh, but yes the story uh, these guys had the fear of god in their life and there's nothing you know you you could have put them in front of each of them a million us dollars and they would not have been persuaded to say we're not going to disobey the lord even if it's for money and so uh, there comes the question uh, will you serve an idol or will you serve our god that's in heaven now idolatry in the past was very explicit you know you would have your statue and you would bow down and you bring your sacrifice to your idol and everybody can see you're worshiping idols like very explicit okay today uh, idol worship is very kind of uh, mild and kind of just comes in through society now we got like a, a mindset we got a, a doctrine that we worship we got a you know some people even worship the bible they don't worship god you know they even talk to god it's just all about the bible and the the words and the greeks and the hebrews and all of those things and the bible is, is, is important but the bible is not god eh? <laughs> the bible is just a book about god and you can learn about god and you can connect with god through the word uh, but he is not the bible you know that book is not god but some people worship the bible you know and then of course some people will worship money or they'll lay their life down just for sexual experiences or um you know um, you know what whatever the the thing is you know um and they put that higher as god uh, their fear you know sometimes people can actually worship their fear 
because they can say, you know, uh, God can't save me from this fear that I have. And even if, you know, someone pray for that person, uh, they just don't believe that God can save them. And they put fear higher uh, than God. And then that becomes an idol in their life. So anything can really become an idol. But the moment you have the fear of the Lord in your life, uh, then you realize, but I have to obey God and Him alone, and I, I should not worship or love uh, anyone else, or, you know, put first, um, and, and that's also uh, the moment the fear of the Lord is in your life, and it's easy for you to be completely in love with Jesus, and open up that gate of first love for the river of life to flow through your life, okay, so I want to go through a few scriptures that talk about the fear of the Lord, the first verse I want to come here is 2 Samuel chapter 23 verse 3, it says there, uh, the God of Israel said, uh, the rock of Israel spoke to me, he who rules over men must be just, ruling in the fear of God. So if the Lord is uh, promoting you into a place of stewardship or lordship or kingship in your life, then it's important that you have the fear of the Lord. Because when the fear of the Lord is there, then you'll bring the justice of God into your life and into a situation where you have control or dominion to rule over. Okay, so uh, Exodus chapter 18 verse 21. Moreover, you shall select from all the people able men, such as fear God, men of truth, hating covetousness, and place such over them to be rulers of thousands, rulers of hundreds, rulers of fifties, and rulers of tens. Okay, so the Lord says, the first qualification in this list of qualifications for a ruler or a leader that are selected is that they have the fear of God. That means they're not going to be influenced uh, by people. They're not going to be a people pleaser. They're not going to choose people or fear the faces of people uh, before they have the fear of God in them, which simply means they will be ruthless at being obedient to God. Remember, the fruit of the fear of the Lord is always obedience to God. Okay, uh, then Second Chronicles chapter 19, verse 5 to 7. Then he said, Judges in the land throughout all the fortified cities of Judah, city by city, and said to the judges, Take heed to what you are doing, for you do not judge for man, but for God who is with you in the judgment. Now therefore, let the fear of the Lord be upon you. Take care to do it, for there is no iniquity with the Lord our God, no partiality, nor taking of bribes. Okay? And so the fear of the Lord is going to sustain those leaders and those judges to rule justly according to heaven's standard in holiness. Okay? And so immediately, uh, you can see there how important if you are a leader, if you are prosperous, to have the fear of the Lord in your life. Okay, then uh, we go to uh, this verse in Luke chapter 1 verse 50. Uh, and this is the song that Mary and Elizabeth sang uh, when they were pregnant and they were rejoicing about this babies that God has given to them supernaturally. Uh, and they were singing and they said, And His mercy is on those who fear Him from generation to generation. Now, I want to fulfill the plan God has for my life. I want my children to fulfill the plan that's on their lives. And so therefore, I want them to give birth to the plan and purpose that God has given to them. Just like Mary received this baby. And that was her purpose, to be the mother of the Lord Jesus. That was the purpose of Elizabeth, to be the mother of John, who would rise up as a prophet. And so in the same way, I want to have the fear and the mercy of God upon my life so that, that blessing of God can be from generation to generation. And it's actually the fear of the Lord that sustain a generational blessing. So that's why you will go to a community and you'll see young people that fear God, they worship God, they love God. And that generational blessing and anointing can be transferred from uh, the parents to the children to the grandchildren okay uh, but when you come to a society where you see young people and they don't have the fear of the lord they don't regard the laws of god they're not obedient to the lord then the generational blessing that was supposed to come on them never comes and then a curse comes on their life and now there's a generational curse that are uh, they are cursed from generation to generation and so therefore the fear of the Lord is really a protection in your life. Okay, let's read this verse in uh, Deuteronomy chapter 5, 29. Oh, that they had such a heart in them, that they would fear me and always keep all my commandments, that it might be well with them and with their children forever. 
Okay, so this is a hot cry from God. God is actually saying, if these people can fear me, all right, they can have the fear of the Lord in them. Um, you know, that that's a, a righteous fear. Uh, it's a, um, a reverence. Um, it's a surrender to the Lord. It's a regard. It's a position where you honor the Lord. If they have the fear of the, the Lord in their hearts, and if they follow and they, they obey the commandments of God, then it says there that it might be well with them and with their children forever. So wealth and blessing are transferred from generation to generation, but it, it's maintained and it's kept by the fear of the Lord in the hearts of the children of God. It's an amazing thing, you know, when we come into the throne room of God, then we're full of awe and full of wonder and amazement at the glory that is resting on God. And when we go there, then the fear of the Lord come and sit on our lives. Okay, that's amazing. Okay, uh, then I'm going to end with this one. Joshua chapter 24, verse 14. Now, therefore, fear the Lord, serve Him in sincerity and in truth, and put away the gods which your fathers served on the other side of the river and in, G and in Egypt. Serve the Lord. Okay, so here's the options. You can fear the Lord and serve Him in sincerity and in truth. That means you're going to be obedient to what He tells you to do. And that's a manifestation of the fear of the Lord in your life. You can fear the Lord or you can just go and serve these other gods. And so when the fear of the Lord departs from God's children, then they will start to serve other gods. And so therefore, we want to ask the Lord for His fear to rest upon us through our lives. So let's just do a prayer. I know we're going to talk just now about how the fear of the Lord teaches us in heaven. But just where you are, just sit there and say, Lord, I pray for the fear of the Lord to return back into my heart. Lord, that, that I will be like Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego, Lord, in the face of a fiery furnace, Lord. I will not uh, become weak, but I will have the fear of God in my life and I will stand for you. I will continue to be obedient to you and I will not disregard your instructions and your commands to my life, Lord, but I will be meticulous to follow everything that you call me to do and so lord i give you honor i give you praise and i'm going to walk in your ways and so lord i pray for the fear of the lord on my generation lord we humble ourselves and we uh, surrender ourselves before you lord and we receive the fear of the lord lord you are awesome you are amazing you are wonderful uh, you are glorious all powerful all mighty and so lord uh, we worship you and as we worship you lord we can see the fear of the lord come in to our lives and so lord we pray for the fear of the lord on the next generation even as they rise up as leaders lord that they will make decisions with the fear of the lord in their hearts lord thank you that this is a protection and a covering uh, this is a wonderful thing that you give to us lord we give you honor and we receive so you can just see how the fear of the lord is come and sit on you and lord we receive that covering right now in our lives in the name of jesus amen <laughs> let's talk about the training that you will receive from the spirit of the fear of the lord in heaven as you join the school of the seven spirits of god now uh, the fear of the lord is all about obedience uh, to the lord and when you step into the throne room of god then there's a very specific protocol of how to operate and the spirit of the fear of the lord will teach you how to have awe in your life and to how to have reverence toward uh, toward the lord and to uh, see his might and his dominion uh, and the glory uh, that is surrounding the throne of god and so uh, when you have the fear of the lord uh, in your life uh, then you will just fall down before his throne with the right amount of all of these majesty in your life and it's very important that you have to uh, act in that way uh, because uh, when you honor the lord then you can receive what is on his life unto your own life and so you'll find people that walk with a lot of glory inside of them are are walking with the fear of the lord in their lives especially when they come into the throne room of god now another level is then your intimacy with the father himself uh, when you actually spend time with God. Now, uh, I always thought when someone would go to the Father, 
the glory of God is so incredible that that person will actually just fall down uh, dead because of the level of glory. But because of the blood of Jesus that has washed us clean and has uh, uh, prepared us so that we can have access to the Father, it is actually possible. So Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. So he actually said, it is possible for you to come to the Father. That's in John chapter 14, uh, verse 6. And so when you come uh, to the Father, it's important to have the fear of the Lord in you so that you will come with the correct protocol, with intimacy, with reverence, uh, with love uh, towards Him, and also uh, with the holiness uh, of the Lord. All right? And so that's, that's another area. Now, of course, we come to the throne room of God. There we are changed. Uh, from glory to glory uh, when we spend that time with the father what's on that father on on our father that's in heaven come on our lives and now of course we also want to bring the fear of the lord into our natural environment and again the spirit of the fear of the lord uh, will teach and train you how to function with the fear of the lord in your life so that you can retain wealth and glory that god gives you uh, you know, when you start to get influence and you have a lot of resources, then people tend to uh, move away from the Lord. But when you have the fear of the Lord in you, then you're going to operate with obedience and with conviction. And so you're going to understand, well, this uh, resources that I have is really just so that I can fulfill uh, the mandate uh, that the Lord has for my life. And I, I'm convicted in every decision that I make uh, to do what God is calling me to do and, and, and to secure that and to be safe. You need the fear of the Lord. You know, uh, uh, one of the easiest ways to destroy a person is to give him finances and to give him money and fame and recognition, but he doesn't have the fear of the Lord in his life because there's no protection and a covering uh, to keep him in that time when all that resources come. And, you know, the kingdom of heaven is so full of resources and so full of glory, but there's a limitation on what God can release into the lives of people. And that is usually limited because they don't have the fear of the Lord in their lives. And so the spirit of the fear of the Lord will actually teach you how to be able to handle that weight of glory. The spirit of the fear of the Lord the spirit of the fear of the Lord is not about being afraid, but rather an understanding of the awe, wonder, majesty, might and dominion of the person of God. The spirit of the fear of the Lord is all about and around the person of God and teaches us about the realms of holiness, intimacy, worship, reverence and righteousness. The spirit of the fear of the Lord teaches us how to access and bring divine order and its application to the world around us. A few of the things he said was, this is what will happen when the fear of the Lord is taken out of the church. Mm. What you're holding in your left hand is all that is left in the broader church. He said, the front cover, which of course the spirit of the Lord, he said, most charismatic Pentecostal churches you go in all you hear them talk about mostly is we feel the presence of the Lord. Right. We feel the presence or the spirit of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But when the fear of the Lord is, is taken out, the spirit of counsel and might, healing and miracles, the spirit of revelation, the spirit of supernatural yeah. wisdom and, and knowledge, all of those things that, that are really behind the gifts of the spirit are, are lost, they fall out, and all you have left with is a, an atmosphere, or a, and, and I don't want to minimize, you know, feeling the Spirit of the Lord, right. but the Spirit of the, there's more to the Spirit of the Lord than just feeling it, yeah. That's right. That's so and true. how it works in and through our lives. And so, I instantly began to understand this was a God-ordained revelation to me about the fear of the Lord. Mm -hmm. And so I began to look into the Word and just quickly I'll, I'll share with you just a few verses. Okay. Uh, Psalms 111 and 10. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Mm -hmm. Well, wisdom was one of the other seven spirits. Mm -hmm. right. So even though the back binding mm -hmm. was the spirit of the fear of the Lord, it actually says here, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Mm -hmm. uh, Proverbs 1 and 7, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Well, that's one of the other seven spirits. <laughs> so you have wisdom, now you have knowledge. Proverbs 14, 27 says the fear of the Lord is a fountain of life that one may avoid the snares of death. Yeah. It's pretty self-explanatory. 
I found out the fear of the Lord actually improves sleeping at night, getting a better night's rest. <laughs> Proverbs 19.23, the fear of the Lord leads to life so that one may sleep satisfied, untouched oh. by evil. Wow. Praise God. Isaiah 33 and 6. Never heard that before. <laughs> and he will be the stability of we ought to read it. your times, a wealth of salvation, wisdom and knowledge. The fear of the Lord is his treasure. So God considers the fear of the Lord as a treasure chest yeah. made available oh, yeah. to his saints. Lord. Just just a few more. So uh, he says, Proverbs 2 and 5. Then you will discern the fear of the Lord and discover the knowledge of God. Proverbs 8, 13, the fear of the Lord is to hate evil, pride and arrogance and the evil way and the perverted mouth I hate. So literally the fear of the Lord becomes the barometer mm -hmm. on how we live our lives. Mm -hmm. It keeps us it really uh, in check. And then lastly, uh, Ecclesiastes 12, 13 says, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God yeah. and keep his commandments. Yeah, that's right. And so... Uh, without a doubt, the church needs a restoration of the fear of the Lord. And when the fear, not the fear of man, yes. uh, but the fear of the Lord, Amen. it's yeah. different. Amen. When the fear of the Lord returns, a greater level of the supernatural will return Amen. as well.